What is up, gang? This is Justin with Production Crate. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the creation of a simple motion graphic shot in HitFilm. Now, I'll be doing all this in HitFilm Express 2017, but obviously, this will work just peachy in HitFilm Pro. First up, I'm gonna grab some items from the Production Crate website. The main pieces that you saw in the opening sample were the male hand swipe right clip from the Hand Gestures Collection and Slice from the Drippy Transitions Collection. The rest were simply used as accents and were chosen based on personal taste. Now, some of the pieces I used require a pro account to download, but there are still plenty of free elements if you want to make something similar. All right, so everything is downloaded and imported into HitFilm. I've also got a couple images provided by Chris specifically for this demo. However, feel free to use text layers or any of the images you want if you're following along. To get started, I'll right click in the media bin and create a plane, name it background, and use the eyedropper to sample its color from this blue part of the HitFilm interface. Next, I'll make a new composite shot, name it text one, and set it to 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second with a length of five seconds. In this comp, I'll drop my color plane, then make a new text layer named text top with the size set to 1920 by 600. After selecting the text tool, I'll type when in on the first line and doubt on the second line. The font I'm going to use is American Typewriter, but of course, you can pick whatever font you prefer. I'll center the text, then crank its size up quite a bit. Then I'll select the top line and reduce its size so that it roughly matches the width of the lower line. Then select everything again and add a thin black border to help the text stand out against the background more clearly. Now I want to make sure this line is centered vertically. To help with this and also prepare for what's coming next, I'll duplicate the background layer, hide it, then rename the copy to blocker and set its Y position to minus 540, which puts its top edge exactly halfway between the top and bottom of the frame. Then I'll adjust the text layer until the lines are evenly spaced on either side of this center line. I want these two lines to emerge from the center of the frame, and I'm going to use the set matte effect to do this. Now, if you're not familiar with the set matte effect, it lets you control the current layer's alpha channel by using the alpha or image information from another layer. In this case, I'm going to use the blocker plane we just made to control the visibility of the text. And notice that the top text line disappears, leaving the bottom line surrounded by a black background. This is because the default blend mode for the effect is replace which replaces the alpha channel of the current layer with that from the target. In this case, wherever the plane is visible, it forces all image information in the text layer to be visible as well, including the formerly transparent space around the text. This isn't what we want, of course, so I'll switch the blend mode to subtract, which tells HitFilm to use what's visible in the target layer to control what to hide in the current layer. This ends up removing the bottom line, which is what we want. To get a version of the text with the bottom line in place and the top line hidden, just duplicate the text layer, rename it to text bottom, open its set matte effect, and check the invert box. This inverts the subtraction process, leaving just the top line. Now it's time to animate these two lines. To make this a little easier, I'll start typing the word position into the search box at the top of the layer stack. This will give me easy access to the position properties of both text layers without needing to scroll. I'll move to frame 20 and activate keyframing for both position properties. Then I'll move back to frame two and adjust their Y position values until they're just barely hidden by the mat. I'll change all keyframes to manual Bezier, then use the value graph to exaggerate the ease into the keyframes at frame 20 a lot more. And that wraps up the first part, so I'll close the tab for this comp. Next, I'll make a new comp with the same properties and name it Main. The first thing I'll do is drop in the comp we just made, then drag in the hand swipe clip above it. I'll also drop in the lower elements we'll be transitioning to, the Make It Awesome logo image, and another copy of the background plane with its color changed to red using the fill color effect.
I'll hide these lower layers for now while I work on the others. The hand is a 4K clip, so I'll need to scale it down to 50% so that it fits in the frame. I know the transition starts at the left center part of the frame, and I want the finger swipe to line up with it. So I'll go to the frame where the finger begins its swipe, then move the layer into place. Next, I'll shift its timing so that the hand comes in a few frames after the text has settled. Now for the transition. Drop the slice transition in and place it just below the when in doubt composite shot. The transition is also a 4K clip, so scale that to 50%. Then adjust its timing so that it starts to appear as the finger swipe begins. Now you may notice while doing this that these elements are different frame rates, but at full speed, this won't be noticeable. Instead of using this transition to cover the when in doubt composite shot, I want to use it as a mat for that comp so that it reveals the other layers below it. So I'll unhide my when in doubt comp and add the set matte effect to it. The source will be this transition, and I'll change the blend mode to subtract. And now we've got the basic transition in place. While this works pretty well, I want things to pop just a little more. The first thing I'll do is add a border to the hand swipe. To do this, I'll start by duplicating the hand swipe layer, changing its name to hand border, and parenting it to the hand in case I decide to shift things later. On the border layer, I'll drop the invert alpha effect, then the matte cleaner effect. Inside matte cleaner, I'll increase the choke value, which sort of eats away at the contour of the alpha channel, effectively leaving a gap around the hand. A value of around 30 feels pretty good. Next, I'll duplicate the invert alpha effect and move the copy below matte cleaner. Combined with the hand, this layer now creates an outline around the hand, though if you hide the hand layer, you'll see it's actually solid black. I'll add the fill color effect to make it white. I also want the transition edge to stand out a little more, so I'll use a little trickery to add a border to it as well. Instead of duplicating the layer though, I'll work directly on the layer itself. First I'll apply a matte cleaner, set the choke value, then add invert alpha, and fill color this time choosing a muted yellow. Now you might think that changing this layer's alpha would also change the matte on the when in doubt comp. However, when looking at a matte source, the set matte effect uses the properties of the source before effects are added. Because of this, we can modify the alpha channel for one purpose, while the original is still being read for another, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm noticing the interactivity is starting to slow down a little, so I'll drop the viewer resolution to quarter from here on out. At the end of the transition, notice how the blobs are getting smaller and smaller until they disappear. Instead of having our border just vanish when the super tiny blobs go away, I'll go back into the matte cleaner effect on the transition border and keyframe the choke property so that it drops to zero by the time the transition is finished. So here's where things currently stand after a RAM preview. The next step is to add my motion graphics accents after the transition is complete. And I'll speed through this part because it's just a matter of placing, scaling, and timing them until I'm happy with how it feels. Next, I want the Make It Awesome text to squash and stretch into the image of the sticker. After dropping the sticker image into the comp and hiding it, I'll activate keyframes on the scale property of the text version on the frame where I want the change to begin. Six frames later, I'll click the chain to unlink the scale properties, then scale the width to 110% and the height to 80%. I'll also activate position keyframes on this frame. Then I'll move ahead another six frames, unhide the sticker layer, activate its scale and position keyframes, unlink the scale values, and set its scale to 80% width and 110% height. Now I'll scale and position the text version to match the general proportion of the sticker on this frame, and then do the same with the sticker so it matches the text six frames earlier. Once that's done, I'll add opacity keyframes to both layers, so the text fades out and the sticker fades in during the big scale change. Doing this across about a three frame span feels pretty good to me. 
To wrap up this part, I'll return the sticker layer to 100% scale for both width and height, six frames after its last scale keyframe, and then set all keyframes on both layers to manual bezier. Here's how that part looks after a quick RAM preview. The rest of the piece is pretty straightforward, so I'll just give a quick description of the setup. First, I added a motion graphics accent piece behind the sticker once it finished scaling into place. Then I scaled the sticker to fill the frame at the end of the shot, using manual bezier keyframes to start smooth and then gradually accelerate. I cheated a fade to black by adding the fill color effect to the sticker layer and keyframing the blend amount from 0 to 100% during the last few frames of the shot. And last but not least, I added a gray layer at the top of the layer stack and dropped the vignette effect onto it. And with that, we have our final piece. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this. I hope it's been useful for you. And until next time, remember to make it awesome.